Let not your heart be troubled Just say a prayer at night Just have a little faith Oh, no matter what you, what you may do And uh, everything gonna be all right. On most Neville albums, you can find a dedication to St. Jude, the patron saint of lost causes. Since the 50s, Aaron has done time, hard labour, and he's been ripped off countless times. 30 years and two Grammys later, he's far from a lost cause, and his sweet falsetto has won critical acclaim all around the world. Did you grow up with a piano in your house? No. Uh, me and Art had to find a piano to learn to play. <laughs> we'd go by people's house and whoever had a piano, we'd just pick on it. Yeah? Well, yeah. There, well, well there must have been um, people in your family that were influences as far as music was concerned. Yeah, well, my uncle, uh, George Landry, Big Chief Jolly, he was a piano player. He played, like, his own style, just like Professor Longhead has got his own style, yeah. Mm. And he kind of influenced us. But Art was the first one. Play the piano. Yeah, and I used to sit down and watch him and pick, you know. He started off playing on the black key, like. See, that was easy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it looks easy when you do it. You've got a very distinctive style of voice, and um, has that always been the style when you first started singing? Was it like it is now? No, I don't guess so. I had to nurture it, you know, like that. I guess to listen to different singers, you know, when I first started, I was, my dad used to have all the Nat King Cole songs, and I was like a, I wanted to sing like Nat King Cole, like it was, you know, I used to listen to the Cowboys, you know, I'd go to the movie and see Rod Rogers, and it'd be yodeling, so I started, you know, yodeling, <laughs> oh, and it kind of, I guess, stuck with some of the things I do, you can kind of hear that in my singing, you know? Yeah, yeah. When we first started playing, we were just interested in singing. We didn't care about the business, you know, like, I had records back in the days. I'm still waiting to get paid for mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, Tell It Like It Is was like, and sold about four or five million copies. I ain't got a dime from that, you know, so. Do you have quite a bit of control now? You know, they work for us, the other people work for us. For years, Aaron and his brothers were one of New Orleans' best-kept secrets. While their recent successes meant they can now take their music right around the world. When you came to um, Aotearoa, to Auckland, what was your first feeling when you saw the um, three warriors come out towards you? <laughs> um, well, I knew it was part of the, uh, the ceremony and thing, you know, so like, uh, uh, I didn't have no idea what they were going to do, you know, because they did come kind of close with the <laughs> spears and all, yeah. But I felt safe, you know. Mm. It was cool. Did you notice anything, um, did you feel there were any similarities between um, the culture that you saw there and um, you, yourself? Yeah, I felt like, um, I don't know, I felt like I'd been there before, you know. I just felt that I was a part of it. All three of Aaron's sons have followed him into the music business, and after all his hard knocks, Aaron knows what he's talking about. I always tell kids, I used to go down, go to school, school sometimes and talk to the kids. And see if I have my life to live over. First thing, I'd obey my parents. I'd do what they tell me because I know they know best. Because now I'm a parent and <laughs> I know <laughs> what I'd be trying to tell them, you know. Mm. I'd take care of my body. I wouldn't put nothing in my body to hurt me. I'd go to school till they put me out. Mm. You know, and try to learn everything I can and be prepared for this world because it can be hard, you know. Mm.